Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. Today we hear a troubling passage about Jesus rejecting his family in favour of strangers. It raises difficult questions for us as we try to follow Christ in true discipleship and faith. As our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Elizabeth is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his companions could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Families are complicated things. We think of them with joy or pain, or for many of us perhaps, with a mixture of both. And today's Gospel passage, one of the few that dwells directly on the idea of family, is not easy to read or understand. It shows Jesus apparently rejecting his family, including his mother, in favour of a company of misfits and social outcasts. It's not the only place in the Bible that Jesus tells us that our human families are not as important as the task of following God. And so it's important, I think, to take a little time to consider what this means for us if we are to be true disciples of Christ. I'd like to start with a notion of sin. And the best place to start with sin would be in today's reading from the book of Genesis. It's a well-known story. God walks in the garden, but Adam and Eve hide themselves because they know they are naked. They have been tricked by the serpent and eaten the fruit from the forbidden tree, and they are all expelled from paradise. The passage has given rise to libraries of scholarship on the meaning of paradise, original sin, the fall of humanity, free will, salvation and covenants, to name but a few of the theological questions that come to mind. But the question I would like to touch on today is the meaning of sin, 
or rather the dynamics of sin and sinning. Humanity's expulsion from paradise and the punishment of pain yet to come is the result of violating an explicit order from God. It is, on the face of it, a matter of breaking a law. And the dominant understanding of this passage and what it means to sin is the defying of commands of God. But perhaps there's a more subtle reading here. The passage begins with the Lord walking in the garden in the evening breeze, looking for Adam and Eve. Where are you? he asks. It's a far cry from the all-knowing, all-seeing God that we find elsewhere in the Bible. This is a personal narrative, one of relationship. Now, the philosopher Martin Buber it identified two attitudes to the world, I, thou, and I, it. The first is a recognition that other people, thou, are equals or at least partners. It's marked by interconnectedness and dialogue, engagement literally between I and thou, me and you. The second attitude, that of I, it, views the world and other people as the other, as things to be used in a transactional framework. Here we find commands to obey, be obeyed, value found only in usefulness to others, disregard for personal hopes and fears. Mutual joy and healing are displaced by disparity of power, judgment and objectification. And this distinction is relevant, I think, because Adam and Eve's sin is not straightforward to understand. Is it simply a question of breaking the law, defying the word of God? He commands and we fail to obey? Or is it a rupturing of a relationship, alienating us from God when once we were close? Does he talk to us as thou, or does he think of us as it? Is sin breaking a rule or breaking a heart? Or is it both? And that's not all. We can see not just a damaged relationship between God and humanity, but also between the other parties in this story. Adam and Eve blame each other, and they both blame the serpent. And all of them suffer the punishment of sin without ever repairing their relationship with each other. It makes us think about humanity's relationship with the rest of creation, which is predominantly transactional, if not downright exploitative, and the tensions of male and female that underline much of our public and private lives. We're badly in need of God's help to find our right relationship with him and with each other. So let's turn now to our Gospel reading for today. The passage begins with chaotic scenes around Jesus, a huge crowd of Jews and Gentiles all desperate to get close to this man of power, but there's also a rumour that he's mad. In addition, there are scribes from Jerusalem who see him as the enemy and accuse him of being possessed by Satan. In response, Jesus tells them all that if a kingdom, a house, even Satan, Satan himself, is divided. It cannot stand. It must fall. We hear in this an echo of that destructive power of sin that we first saw in the garden, the fall of humanity, the breaking of relationships, the loss of mutual care and dialogue. Jesus' family comes to take him away, but Jesus responds by saying that his mother and brothers are those with, with him in the house rather than those standing outside. It feels a spiteful thing to say, but I don't think this is meant to be a rejection of his family as such. They too are included if they satisfy the one qualifying condition that he demands, that is, to do the will of God. To put it in another way, everyone is invited into this family, this close relationship with God. The will of God is, as Jesus tells us and consistently demonstrates, is to love him and to love each other. And I think this is where we find the good news in today's Gospel. Jesus talks of sin, 
not as breaking the rules or failing to observe religious customs, but of failing to stay in good relationship with God and each other. And that's the message of love that he continually presses upon us. Not fear, but love. To put away envy and blame and resentment. To listen and care and laugh with each other. And in this divided world, in our divided church and divided communities, that sounds a lot like living in paradise. Is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. The response to Lord, we call to you is hear us and answer us. We give you thanks for all who have remained faithful to you, for all who have set seen beyond the temporary to the eternal, for saints and martyrs who have been our inspiration. We pray for the church where it is being persecuted for all Christians afflicted by torture for their faith. Lord, be a strength to those who are losing hope, to the faint-hearted and the fearful. Lord, we call to you. Hear us and answer us. God of peace, we pray for the countries broken by war, for peoples facing ethnic violence and hatred, for all who are being discriminated against. We remember those being robbed of their homes, of their land, or their livelihood. Lord, we call to you. Hear us and answer us. We give thanks for those who have protected us, who have shielded us from harm or evil, who have enriched our lives by their goodness. We pray for the police and the fire service, for all whom our security dep depends. Lord, we call to you. Hear us and answer us. We pray for areas where lives are wasting away, for the poor, the homeless and the refugee, for all who suffer from mental illness, the disturbed and the violent, for all who have lost the will to live and for the suicidal. Lord, we call to you. Hear us and answer us. 
Lord, extend our vision. May we look beyond what we see to the eternal. We pray for all who see you in that glory which is beyond measure. We remember loved ones departed. Lord, we call to you. Hear us and answer us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the peace. The mighty God will raise us up with Jesus and bring us to behold his great glory. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. There will be another online service next Sunday. Details will be on the bulletin and the Benefits website. For those who can join us in person, there will also be services at Spellsbury at 8am and Enstone at 10am. And so our service ends now with a blessing. Do not lose heart or be afraid. Hold fast to that which is good. Look to that which is eternal. And may the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God and three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. <laughs>